Scene Director mod version 3.4.1 should now be out and we've been working more with the stage like feature in particular. There's also some new stuff around synced animations which you can now edit through an XML file if you want to do some modifications to it and also a couple of other minor bug fixes. The major focus on the stage light has always been that we sh are able to control the different stage lights and how they're moving. Um, with the 3.4.1 you now have uh, unparalleled control of how to do your lighting. Uh, this all happens through the edit scene functionality as I showed in the last video. In the edit scene functionality you can now add new lights. Uh, let me just clear out the old lights first. You basically place where you want your spotlight to be. So if we do something like from the bottom here, and then you select add light. And what's new in 3.4.1 is that you have these movement, rotation, and flicker effects, which gives you a uh, much better control of how the, the, the stage light should behave. And also all of these um, operations or flicker, movement, and rotation is also configured in XML file. So if you want to add your new ones, and just the ones we have, feel free to do that as well. Um, we also have, when you're saving the lights, you are also able to go in edit. So if you really want to do more advanced features, uh, for example, moving uh, the stage light around in more advanced patterns that we have as default, you have full flexibility to do that. Uh, that's really a powerful uh, way to set up the stage the way you want. So let's look first at the flicker uh, settings we have so once you save it, that's when you can see the effect. So now this is a standard blinking one, which some different uh, lengths for each blink. Can sort of be used to simulate a light being broken. We have, let me add a new one. We have a, a strobe effect, which basically tries to blink the lights as often as you can. And this can be great, quite cool um, shadows uh, in different settings. Let's take a look at another one. Um, let's do some rotation based. Let's swap a different color. So these are just different props. Let's do this light blue. The rotation one, if we want to do a clockwise rotation, we select that. And you will see now the light rotating around its own axis and lighting up the different. And um, the stage light can be moving while it's rotating and flickering. Uh, you can also, of course, can make it follow an actor. Uh, in that case, any movement doesn't really make sense as it will be overwritten every time the actor moves. But rotation and flicker will definitely be possible to do that. That's a uh, standard uh, rotation clockwise if we do a different light. So whenever you add a new light, the other lights go back to their initial position, so you can see what the effect actually will be. Uh, now we're just going to make a rotation clockwise. So we have two lights just going around here. This is processor intensive, so <laughs> expect some slowdowns if you really go crazy. Um, but it should be straightforward to... Um, take out the lights and, and set the scene up how, how we want. So you don't need to do everything at once. Um, other rotations are going sort of upwards. So this basically just goes around its own axis, uh, but towards the ceiling, then comes back. Sometimes you won't be able to see these lights because it calculates if they are visible or not to you. Other rotation possibilities. Upwards, downwards, up and down. When we do an up and down, I'm just going to put it. That's more. So it doesn't move the whole axis, it just moves slightly up, stops, and goes back. And I've built in some simple ease in and ease out uh, definition here. So it's uh, basically adjusts the speed on how it works. We'll check the rotation once again if there was anything else we wanted to show yeah the sideways ones they're basically just rotating for a bit sideways and then going back again so that could be a basis for a kind of searchlight if you want to make it more advanced 
So then you probably need to save the lights uh, as they are, and then you go into edit the XML file for it. Or you can actually go into the config file and make uh, your own type of uh, rotation uh, and have that available at all times. Uh, last thing I want to show you is the uh, movement part. So this is basically when you're moving the light itself. So you're not rotating it anyway, you're just moving it up and down. Um, effects like these are very effective. You place two lights about this almost the, si the same, um, almost same position. So if I add a new light now in a different color, like for example, uh, blue tone. I do the same movement. We would see some ni nice effects on the shadow as well, because it's basically having two different shadows uh, for this one. And if you add a third light, there may be a rotation. You can get quite advanced uh, things. You notice you sometimes get the blink, and that's basically when when the cam when the, when the spotlight or stage light is pointing directly to you, you get sort of a kind of lens flare, which can also be used effectively if you want to do that. So let's clear the lights. Um, yeah, and there's um, other things as well, which um, just show you some other movements. This is uh, more of the flying uh, movement. So, let's go sideways, and then there is one more advanced at the end, and the fly and return. So basically it goes a bit of a long way and then goes back again. And when you're looking at these movements, you need to think about the X and Y axis uh, within GTA. So if you look at the map, everything going sideways, that will be your X axis, while your Y axis will be here. So if you want to do most, uh, basically some of these uh, say if they go only on the X uh, direction or on the Y direction. But I've also made some more advanced thing where you can, um, we probably need to ec uh, edit an XML file where you can set the X, Y ratio. So you can say, well, uh, maybe I want to go uh, for every step uh, on the X axis, I want to go 0.25 steps on the, uh, on the Y axis. And this this is what the, the last example actually does and it's tailor-made for this one tunnel we have over here let me just teleport to that i need to exit the scene here sorry so this is the where the fly so as you can see it's not straightforward it's not it goes for every sort of uh, step in the x direction and goes to about 0.27 in the y direction. And this you can do with the XML file. Um, and that's what I've done for one of these uh, lights, which is just the fly by one. So if I add, let me just add a light which points to the ceiling. Let's choose a different color. And then the movement will be this fly and return. So you see now it just follows the path and of the tunnel and comes back again. And of course you have multiple lights doing the exact same thing. So if we add a new light with the same movement. Perhaps a different color. We'll see they are going at the same. So you can have a very advanced effect in this and it sort of also looks like if you move the camera over here you can see the light sources as they're moving. That can be an effect as well. So for the second part of the video I want to jump back into the actual XML files and show you a bit more how you can edit these manually. So let's show you how to work with these XML files. So the first file I want to show you is the scene director stage lights underscore config. So it's placed in your game directory as you can see here on the left hand side um, 
and it's basically a standard XML file which you can edit with any editor you want, uh, even Notepad if you do, but I would recommend a simple text editor like Sublime or Notepad++ to give you a bit more context and know when you are making invalid XML. Uh, XML is quite simple, it's uh, easy to read, uh, basically each element has a start tag, uh, like this flicker type here, and the same element then has an end tag. Uh, each start tag can have attributes like the name equals blinking, uh, and an element can also have sub-elements which follow the same rules. Um, if you add this slash here, it means that uh, you don't necessarily need any content for this element. It sort of automatically adds the end tag immediately. Um, that's, yeah, that's basically what you need to do. So for the things, the config file is used to show you the uh, flicker, rotation and movement types when you're adding a light. So these are the default um, operations you can add uh, there. So I've added a few examples here, like the blinking one says that uh, start with a flicker effect, have it on, basically have the light on for about 1000 milliseconds, then have it off for 300 milliseconds, turn it on for 1000 milliseconds, and so on. And once it's reached the end here, it will just loop around with the same things here. Um, there's one with on off, where we basically have it on for two seconds, uh, and there's a strobe effect where we have it on for like 20 milliseconds uh, before turning it off and repeating this. Then there's the rotation type, which basically uh, the rotation can either be in the pitch or the jaw direction. I'll read up it if you don't know what the difference is. So basically the jaw is the, this more sideways rotation. Uh, we're basically saying rotate for every sort of uh, update, uh, rotate four degrees, and every update will about be about 10, 15 milliseconds, I think. Um, the length here will typically be zero. It doesn't, yeah, just keep it zero. Because um, you want to go around and around all the time. If you want to change different, um, having different speeds, then you would um, change the length here. So this is a m bit more advanced up and down where it sort of uh, accelerates and goes upwards before it slows down and then goes downwards. So typically for these type, you will have two sections which are sort of the same, but uh, in opposite, um, uh, one is uh, positive numbers and one is negative numbers. Um, yeah, there's not much more to say about that. If you sort of don't make them balance, then the light will, yeah, when looping it, it won't do the same thing uh, the next time either. Uh, that is a bit challenging if you're doing the movement uh, part, as the light will, might just move away where you can't see it. So whenever you go into the um, edit scene mode or uh, back again, it will reset the light back to the original position. And then we have the movement one. These have the X, Y, and Z attributes and also a length of how long you want to do this. So this is uh, a movement where we're moving the stage light up and then down. Uh, so basically how we're waiting also half a second where we're doing nothing. Uh, which is why you don't have the X and uh, Y and Z attributes here. Um, you also have the possibility to use this X, Y ratio. So if you want to sort of define movement, which should go both in the X and the Y axis, as explained earlier, uh, you can say that you can just input the X values and say that the Y value should be 0 0.27 times the X ratio. And the same thing you can do if you just define the Y ratio, you can use a Y X ratio attribute to do the same thing. So this basically is the, the fly scene we, we, we have, which we'll show you a bit later as well. So that's the file with the config where you can add new types or, or tweak them to what you want. Then we have the save file. So whenever you save the lights, it will save it into the scene director stage lights underscore save. Um, and you can edit that file as you see afterwards. And I think that's one of the powers to start tweaking that, make the individual lights, place them somewhere and start tweaking with this movement or rotation. Uh, this is the file for the, the flyby scene. Um, it's very similar to see the values you have here, but due to rounding and floating point operations, they are slightly different, but it shouldn't, doesn't really matter. Um, but a better example maybe to start tweaking and to understand the structure is uh, one show where I have uh, within the airstrips. So basically 
There's three different lights, each represented by a stage light uh, element. Uh, the stage light element has the position in X, Y, and Z coordinates, and it also has the rotation uh, in X, uh, Y, and Z coordinate. Y is typically always zero, so I don't sure, I'm not sure why I include it anyway. Uh, then you have the prop name, which is basically the spotlight you want to use. You can also use the spotlight, which is not part of the scene director mod, if you want to do that. Um, you can probably also use uh, actually any prop, which is not a light as well, to doing the same thing. Um, then there's a few attributes saying, is it tracking an actor? And if it's tracking an actor, it needs to have a separate attribute about which actor it's tracking uh, as an index. And then if it has it, does it have flicker effects? Does it have movement effects or does it have rotation effects? So these, if these are zero, then it doesn't look for any movement uh, sub-elements. Uh, for example, this one is one, then it says, well, then I'll actually actively look if there are any movement uh, uh, elements below. Uh, so you see this one has movement, this one has rotation, while this one actually has none of these. So these are not being uh, used at the moment. They're just uh, stored there in the file. So in this way, you can turn on and off the different effects as well as you, you're trying to do it. Yeah, so typically you would start tweaking this value, especially if you want to do advanced things like movement or rotation. Um, you would then uh, clear all lights from the scene director mod and just go into the save and load menu again and load this file. So no need to restart the mod or anything, just uh, clear the lights and load it again and it will sort of uh, the changes you made will be visible immediately. So now I want to show you from the mod how we actually are um, testing out different combinations when we're actually editing the scene director stage like save file. So typically what I do is that I load the latest file, have a look at the effect, see if it works, or uh, maybe I want slightly different in different colors. Then I just clear the stage lights. I move over to the XML file and do an adjustment there. Let's see, doing that, maybe we can add, just change colors. Then you save the file again, and you load it, and this time you have different colors. And this way, you just do it, you can quickly iterate over how you want the light to be. All right.